Hi, um, I'm Mike Edelhart, the CEO of the Tomorrow Project, producers of the Pivot Conference. And I'm here at Pivot with Tony Hale, the CEO of uh, Chartbeat. So uh, to start off, maybe just to make sure uh, anyone who happens to be uh, uh, you know, looking in, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Chartbeat, uh, how you got it started, what it does, and then uh, maybe we can just uh, chat. Sure. Um, so Chartbeat is a real-time analytics service uh, that is used by about 80% of the top publishers out there. So anytime you're on a site, whether it's CNN or the New York Times, uh, we're getting pulses of data from you, a heartbeat of data, which is letting uh, editors and producers uh, know exactly what's going on. And one of the things that, uh, that gives us is great insight into what's happening in people's behavior on, the, uh, uh, on websites. Because we get second by second behavioral data on every single user going to all of these sites. Uh, and when you have that and you apply some strong data science to that, you can generate tremendous insight, uh, which has an, an impact on what we, uh, what we think about in terms of advertising and the power and effectiveness of metrics for advertising. So your function, uh, Chartbeat's function, is to help publishers know more about their audiences, know more about the behaviors, and be more precise and effective in responding to them, is that fair? Yeah, we, the way we think about it is this. We, we help publishers and other people as well. Uh, we have e-commerce players and all around, but publishers is our main market. Uh, we help them understand what matters. We help them know what matters so they can act when it matters. It's not good enough to get this data too late. You've got to have it when it's important, and you've got to know the metrics that matter, not the metrics that don't. Right. Well, so you bring up metrics, and we've talked about this before. Uh, uh, you believe, and I agree, that there's a tremendous amount of activity in the market around uh, digital advertising, mm -hmm. uh, consumer behavior, and all that now. But the metrics are, pick your word, you pick the word. What do you, what, how would you characterize them? Well, my, my challenge in some ways is that the metrics that we've been using are somewhat antiquated. We have for the last 18 years or so, particularly, and particularly when it comes to brand campaigns. In direct response, we've done fairly well on Google's showing there's a business model around that. Uh, with brand campaigns, we've tended to use direct response metrics for brand campaigns, right. which is uh, just an appallingly bad idea. Uh, and when we've used metrics like impressions and so forth, what we've done is we've put value on metrics that have almost zero marginal cost to produce that are so easily gameable that at the end of every quarter, somewhere in some publisher, there's a VP of ad sales saying, bring out the slideshows. Right. And doesn't truly speak to either the advertiser's goals, which are the time and attention of their audience, or what publishers deliver, which is quality content. Right. So um, if we're measuring the wrong things mm -hmm. in the wrong way at the wrong time, uh, what ought we to be uh, measuring? So it's never going to be one metric, but I have a fairly simple uh, hypothesis around this, which is that if brands want to get their audience's time and attention when they are buying a brand campaign, we should probably just measure people's time and attention. And by that, I mean how much time do they actively spend being, when they have that message being communicated to them. So if it's a display ad, how much time is that spent when someone is actively looking at the page with that ad in view? Which is very different from just like, did this, pay, did this ad lo right. load in the viewable section? Right. Uh, that for me is the key, because there's a few things that come from that. For brands, we've shown that there's a direct correlation between the amount of engaged time and brand recall. The more time you spend with your ad in front of someone's face, the more likely they are to see it. It's pretty simple. But it has a couple of other things too. When you start caring about time and attention of your audience, then from a user perspective, life gets a lot better because instead of being asked to click on numerous little right. annoying buttons in order to get to the next piece of content, anything that's friction for the user has to be got rid of because you want to maximize right. time and attention. And for publishers, for publishers, you actually get to equate the value of a page with the quality of the page, how long it is able to hold someone's attention. So for all three groups within their, this kind of brand, advertiser, publisher, user continuum, they all win if we start caring about the things that actually matter. Right. So let's talk about that for a second. So mm -hmm. time is the big measure. Um, done right, that would very strongly imply that it's not just time 
on chart beat or not just time with any ad that it needs to be aggregate time because if I don't know this individual spent that much time engaged and you got that percentage of it mm -hmm. this camp it's hard to sort of know where you stand so it seems like measuring time very strongly implies some sort of universal benchmark that this individual was engaged with brands online for mm -hmm. 31.2 hours and you got 14.6% of that engagement. Absolutely. So well, there's a few things. There's, there's quite a lot of good data about the nature of engagement that we can tell. Because previously, kind of time has always been a somewhat tricky metric to measure. Uh, for all the people who've had more than one tab open at any one moment in time or got off to get coffee, they've right. been hurting those kind of measurements right. of time. However, these days, we can actually tell very well from the signals that you're sending, whether it's mouse movement, scrolling, keyboard stroke, whether you're likely to be engaged in general. 95% of the people, 95% of the time, have made some kind of active movement right. uh, within 4.8 seconds if they're actively engaged in looking at the content. Right. So when you start to look at that kind of data, you can start to see, yes, we can tell exactly how long you're uh, engaged for. And then when you start to put that together, you can start to say exactly that. Right. The lifetime exposure to this campaign for this individual right. was five minutes and 30 seconds. Right. And when you have that, it's incredibly powerful. Right. And with the benchmarking, the great thing about this is time is, is not really gameable. It's zero sum. So if I'm taking time from, so we can all right. agree on what time means. And if I'm taking time from one place, I can't multiply it and have, have you looking in two different places. Right. That keeps up the value of it. Right. And also uh, uh, creates a framework in which someone's ascendant and someone is not. In other words, somebody's yeah. got to win, uh, exactly. essentially. Uh, like the, the days, and I hope to see them end soon, but right now, someone can take a page view and they can turn it into 50 page views through the application of slideshow technology. And that sucks, <laughs> quite frankly. If, you know, and if I'm Mark Zuckerberg, I can add a box to Facebook and I can generate a billion new impressions. I cannot add a 25th hour to someone's day. That's right. the precision and beauty of time as a metric. Right. So uh, here's time, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty clear. Let's flip it over now and talk about the engaged part. So you touched yeah. on that a little. So this is not just time. This is not simply screen was open. This is not simply computer was on. What you're talking about is time that's been uh, essentially modified or uh, uh, you know uh, carpentered in a way by some action, shaped. Yes, and in the the key here is to try and match the metric you're building as closely as possible to what a brand actually wants. A brand isn't saying, I want an ad open in a browser for X period of time. They're saying, I want this person's attention. And so the, what you have to do is measure that person's attention. So simply having like time on site or traditional kind of counters without paying attention to whether the person's actually looking at the page or not yeah. doesn't actually help us. And also is, to, to be frank, gameable. Now, a non-gameable metric is one that takes time, but then applies triggers of engagement, right. signals that we, where we can tell if someone's looking at the page or not. And when you do that, you can get a very strong understanding of how long did you spend when you had the time and attention of this person? How right. long did you get to communicate your message? Got it. Now, what about the question of this person? So, um, here's acts of engagement mm -hmm. over a frame of time. Does there need to be a third element that indicates that those acts of engagement were taken by one human being? Otherwise, the real answer is some human being mm -hmm. um, did these over some frame of time, but it might have been me part of the time and my 16-year-old daughter part of the time. Uh, so there's, there's always going to be challenges in some ways with identifying people who are using the same computer and so forth. Uh, until we, until we take, take over the webcams, <laughs> we'll have to cope with that. Uh, and that would kind of scare me anyway. Right. But so easily doable, it's already a little scary yes. right now. But there are but there are a few things where we can actually apply it directly to a person. We can say for this for this particular cookie or for this particular person that we can understand as a representation, we understand what they're like. Because you can if you take the amount of time that people in, in aggregate spend with a campaign uh, and just divide it by the unique visitors, you're gonna miss some of the some of the nuance and beauty of what you can see here in that you may well find that on average two million people spent 30 seconds with your campaign but there's f uh, and they had a frequency of maybe two uh, but there's about five to seven percent of those people who actually spent more than a minute with your campaign regularly 
like right. six or seven times. And it's important to be able to identify those people as well. So it's, we can start with the, with the base right metric, which is time and attention. And then we can start to, segreg uh, to, to segregate based upon the particular people that we care about. Right. Who are the people who are really hitting it where they have high frequency, they're passionate return users? Right. Who are the people that were kind of flybys? Right. When we do that, we can get a really strong understanding of our audience. Got it, and you know, just on that note, it's also possible to flip that around. I mean, you're talking about learning from engaged time, who mm -hmm. matters? Mm -hmm. In other circumstances, there's going to be a population of folks who matter mm -hmm. based on, they, they buy and service jet engines. Um, and so that's the only universe that matters for a particular set of products. And so the same sort of approach can be turned on its head, which is whatever you can deliver that produces engaged time for that universe is what you want to deliver, and that's, whether it's an ad or whatever it is. And that's exactly why it's not enough just to know what matters, but to be able to deliver the data in time for people to act when right. it matters. Because in that situation, when you have that limited audience for, for jet engines and, or, or, or what have you, then being able to understand how well am I hitting? Am I getting this person's time and attention? If not, how do I adapt? Because this is the key as well. We're moving into a world where we are not just hitting and hoping anymore. We have the ability to adapt. So when we have the right metrics delivered in the right time frame to the right people, to the frontline people who can actually act, that's when you have a very powerful system that enables us to always make sure we're optimizing the time and attention that we have of the audience that's most relevant to us. And so for uh, Chartbeat, what does this all mean? So is this uh, something that you as a company want to bring forward? Is this something that you as a company want to advocate everybody getting together and cooperating on uh, in the interest of growing the market? Sort of what I'm, So the great thing about building your own company uh, is you can start with your principles and then put your money where your principles are. So we believe in quality content on the web. We believe in brands getting what they want. So we're going to build for it. And we're going to shout from the rooftops about how we can change this and how we can make a better world. And if other people come along and do it too, that's fantastic. But I'm not going to wait for it. I'm going to build. Right. So one last question, talking about waiting for folks. Are the publishers ready for this? Are the brands ready for this? I mean, there's the story of getting too far ahead of the crowd. John the Baptist, there you are on the desert all by yourself. It's great, but you're alone. And getting a little closer to the crowd, who's then in a position to uh, be willing to follow you. Well, I'd argue John the Baptist had quite a lot of impact over, over time. <laughs> but I think there's two things that, are, uh, that should be noted here. One, brands have been asking for this from TV for the last 50 years. Right. This isn't anything new. This is just now we have the data to be able to tell them what they want to know. Right. And for publishers, publishers facing you know, the last 15 years or so of running up the down escalator, trying desperately to <laughs> marry quality content with the costs involved, with a, a model that's commoditized impressions. This is their chance to build a business model for quality on the web. Right. So yeah, I don't, think, I don't think we're too far ahead. I think that we have to run as fast as possible now to try and make sure we can help. Terrific, you know, I don't think there's an image uh, uh, beyond marrying uh, while going uh, uh, up the down elevator, uh, escalator that uh, could possibly be any better. So why don't we end on that note? Uh, terrific ideas and we uh, uh, look forward to helping uh, support you and support the market in making uh, these kinds of metrics come forward because we think, uh, as you do, that it's essential to get this uh, opportunity where it needs to be Thank for you. everyone's interest. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.